want to get cock blocked or do you? I think you will all day long. We got Van Halen, Judas Priest, cock blocks happening all day long. We got two guys coming in, and these fellas collect frozen entrees. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, frozen? Those, you mean TV dinners? Yes, they collect frozen dinners of some sort. I know these guys are absolutely nuts. They're going to be in here. It's going to be great. All morning long, 106.9, stand and dead in the morning on the Roosters, K-O-C-K. The cock. <laughs> Fellas. Now, these guys are nutty. They collect frozen food entrees. That's Gotta right. Sean this. and Vince, frozen food entrees. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Before we do any talking, go ahead and put on your cock hats. Nothing better on the radio than funny hats. That's right, my friend. Funny hats in the morning. Stan and Dan, 106.9. Put on the gobbler. Yeah, you got balls on your chin. It doesn't even make sense. Here it comes another meeting sense. with the boss. Hey, they look good on sticks, and those guys blow. All right, so you guys collect frozen foods. That's very interesting. Frozen food entrees. We're, why? We're fr- why? We're frozen. First question, why? Well, we're frozen entree enthusiasts, and we co- yeah, we collect frozen frozen entrees. How do you so know? When how do you know when you're done? <laughs> You How do you know when you're done? That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Listen, um, when you guys collect, the, is there any particular one that you collect? Is there, is there like a, you know, is what's there the a, most what's expensive? the babe, yeah. most expensive? What's the Babe Ruth? The Babe Ruth. Yeah, what's the most expensive? Well, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, what's your Babe Ruth? What's your Sammy Sosa? But it's, it's worth I understand you guys have a club. Yeah, uh, so. yeah, the Mesa Frozen Entree Enthusiast Club. Oh, yeah. What's that? The Pussy Catcher Club is all filled up. Oh, <laughs> you tell us how does that? Yeah. Members. Hey, ladies, get the runoff over at the Frozen Food Enthusiast Club. That's a long name for a we club. Have Too long to wait for a club. I understand you guys right. are having a convention. Is that right? A convention coming in? Right. We got a convention. It's going to be. We're going to get. Tell us we're running out of time, but everybody else can check you out on the web at frozenfood.com. I imagine something like that. It's, it's fantastic. Well, we'll check it out. We'll link to you here at 106.9. Really enjoying meeting you guys. Really. KOCK standing down in the mornings. Come back. We're going to make a prank phone call to Jessica Hahn. Well, collecting in general is, is it's like a tattoo or, you know, it's, or like potato chips, you know. Um, people become very gluttonous for things. Um, it's coveting. You know, you covet something, you know. Uh, you, you get the first one, then you go into the second one, then the third one. Um, so who knows? I mean, maybe this will become, you know, a, a highly collectible thing. I'm, I mean, stranger things have happened. Collecting is no different than managing people, building a strong corporate team. You got to have vision, you have to have discipline, and you have to have resources. I've got several original scudders, a lot of money. I have tons of accessories. I read one or two a day, they really get me motivated. I have literally every single one of them ever made. Actually, being a firefighter and a collector is quite symbiotic. Um, After a big fire, when we do what we call salvage and overhaul, I'm able to actually root through quite a bit of rubble and find some treasures occasionally. Isn't it illegal to remove something from the scene of a fire? Oh no, well actually maybe, but we all do it. Yeah, I've I've done it before. You know, actually I think people are just so thankful for what we do, they expect us to take a few things, I guess. It's all insured anyway. I have quite a collection of plates, it's quite unique actually. I have more plates than I do entrees at this point. Um, I'm very proud of them. I do display them prominently in my home. Uh, This uh, anniversary plate here, um, I got down on the Willow District area. A little house fire down there. I'm very proud of it. This next wood one here is a Jungfrau. It's from the Matterhorn region. It is an authentic Jungfrau. It's not a reproduction. A lot of people come in, look at my collection and think it is, but it's not. I'm very proud of it. Uh, I got it down at an uh, antique store downtown. Um, 
with the fire damage, it's still very valuable. The next one is my pride and joy. Um, it's very valuable to me, but uh, also on the open market. This one I got down on 8th Street. It was a bungalow fire. It was actually quite savage, and um, the fire was a blowing. Um, I was very fortunate to make it out alive. Now, what about the family? Didn't they have any interest in getting those plates back? Uh, oh, no. Uh, they burned to a crisp. Um, uh, but I was able to save the full set, um, so it wasn't a total loss. Isn't it gorgeous? You see, when you collect entrees, you don't collect hot pies. Turns out, that's not cool. So I've always fucked with my buddy Al here. I'm like, yeah, well, how's the pot pies, buddy? How's the pot pies? <laughs> I love it. It's hilarious. You get super dick. You're such a pussy. <laughs> I love it. In my collection now, I've got over 900 pieces. So just to hold them all, I got to run 14 full-size freezers in a one-bedroom apartment. This is a classic Frigidaire model. The first freezer I ever owned, got it for my 12th birthday, had it ever since, never let me down once. All brass fittings underneath, great unit. But these, these are my boys. Goose and Mav, amazing, amazing units. Now this, just a vintage, a classic, 68 Sears Cold Spot Space Master 17, just an amazing unit. Actually, this one has been hot rodded twice the Freon capacity that it was issued with back in 68, gonna keep everything cold as fuck, and that one is heavy as shit, believe me. But now this one here, 2002 Calvinator, cryogenic fucking cold. It runs at 125 watts per side at eight ohms, tricked out aftermarket. I can run this bitch at 500 watts all day long, 450 PSI on the compressor, airtight, watertight, submersible up to 350 feet. It's my best flagship top of the line unit. This is where I keep all my deluxe gourmet entrees. This is where you're gonna find my grade A premium shit. brother's been staying with him for a couple of weeks. He's in town. Really looking forward to meeting him. Well, he's deaf, and I worked at a Christian camp for deafs for like four summers in a row, and they're all really nice. I think Sean's just a really good person for having a deaf brother. I want the jumbo wing nuclear and nacho supreme. Okay, we'll get that right out for you. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Are you deaf? Uh. Good. My son is a Cub Scout, and we're trying to work on earning his sign language badge. And he could learn it from a book, but I thought it would be more fulfilling if he could learn it from a real-life deaf guy. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, anything you can think of easy. Let me fuck you. Well, this here is uh, my stadium pal. Lock that in place there. Obviously, it's a uh, it's an external uh, polyurethane bladder. I attach it to my leg. I use this uh, to capture and store my urine until I'm ready to deal with it on my own terms. Uh, is that for medical reasons? Oh no. Um, no, it's one of the many tools I use in my life to actually take control back in my life. If I'm driving, I'm driving. If I'm doing chores, I'm doing chores. If I'm working, especially when I'm working, I wanna be working. I don't wanna be going potty all the time. I'm there to teach people as a safety and efficiency consultant how to be more efficient, okay? I'm there to focus, get in the zone, stay in the zone, and focus on the task and job at hand. And, and you know, that's how come I only sleep two hours and 40 minutes every night. Well, Heidi and I have been married for about four and a half months now. Uh, we are newlyweds. People sometimes uh, are surprised to learn that uh, we are a couple. Um, yes, there was a period in my life where I did experiment with um, homosexuality. It was about from the age of 13 till about six months ago. But that's when I met the good folks at uh, X Gay Ministries. And they opened up my eyes to the fact that I am a sinner. Um, but I could be saved through um, a 
strict regimen of prayer and self-loathing. Just about half full, I'm gonna splash it with some olive oil. I had only been on the wagon for about 18 days when Raphael introduced me to Heidi. Uh, Raphael's my ex-gay sponsor. Uh, she had just put a transmission in his new uh, Mustang. It's purple. He thought we'd have a lot in common, and, and, and we do. Um, we both like to go to the movies. We both like to go out to dinner, and, and, and we share a, uh, a real desire to uh, avoid uh, eternal damnation. Okay, we got a shitload of shit to cover tonight, folks, so let's get started, all right? Now, as everybody knows, the new Swanson's coming out this Friday. Yeah, finally. I know. So uh, they're due to be released 12.01 Friday morning. I think I might be able to get my hands on a few of them a little bit ahead of schedule and have some in time for Thursday night's meeting. I've, I've got a hookup on the inside at Safeway. I'm gonna do my best, but that's all I can say about that. What about the rumors about the Russian dumplings? <sighs> yeah, I've heard those rumors myself, and I gotta tell you, to be honest, I think it's fucking bullshit. I don't think we're gonna see those this year. Um, it'd be great for the collectors, but I really doubt it. It's Scott, buddy. Yeah, I know what you're looking for. The Kiwi Cobbler? I don't know. 50-50. That's the best I can tell you. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. Just think good thoughts. Maybe we'll get them. I think if not this season, uh, probably next season for sure. But the big news... Last minute change in the packaging. They were a little concerned about a conflict with the healthy choice entrees. They're going with red this year. Yeah, I know. It's gonna be right. it's gonna be real sexy. I'm real excited to see him. Sean, are you sure red? Yeah, I'm sure. My people said they're gonna be blue. Well, your people are wrong. MBT is the key to the whole thing. That's what makes frozen entree collecting so fun and so exciting for me. TV dinners have been around since the 50s, whereas entree collecting is a relatively new thing. So you need to be very creative when locating new pieces. This one, I was in the, uh, the freezer aisle at Safeway one day, met another guy there that was a collector. You know, one of these guys, big shit talker, thinks he knows everything. Well, I think we found out how much he knew. S sold me this piece for 19 bucks, just broke it off in his ass. This fucker today is worth over $400, and I just got it like three years ago. This is a beauty, the oldest piece in my collection, 1959 Stouffer's. This is like the Mickey Mantle rookie card. And uh, you might remember the, uh, the Kiss solo meals that they issued. These things, man, these, these are really hard to find today. And look at this, Gene Simmons, this is just a beauty. It's in, it's in premium shape. I mean, this thing is mint. Okay, we got a lot of out-of-town collectors that are real interested in the convention. We gotta keep tabs on these fuckers. So uh, with that in mind, let's hear from Shelly, our IT officer. Everyone was kind of down, because you know no one wanted to kind of step up to the plate and make the website. So I got pretty into it. I was like, oh, I, I could learn this. So I went and I took a, a whole like three week course at MCC and it was great. So we have like stuff about news, we have the photo gallery. You can buy and sell entrees on the site here. We've got a section for that. One day I overheard Sean talking to one of the other members and just, he was kind of, it's like he was bragging about it. So I, I think people really like it and it feels really good, especially that Sean likes it, of course. I used to spend like my Saturday nights, you know, just kind of, I wasted a lot of time just reading and now, of course, I'm on the internet a lot. I guess it's kind of expanded my personal life, you could say, in a way, because I've met people, you know, people have approached me online and, you know, you kind of start chatting with them and I think if Sean had met someone online instead of, you know, in a bar, he might be happier, he might have found someone who really appreciates him more. He just says he's really complicated. Okay, now uh, on the topic of the new membership drive, one more thing. I really don't want to bring it up again, but I have to. Hazing. The hazing of the new members, it's got to stop. <laughs> Look, I think it's funny too. I do. I mean, most of that shit was my idea, don't forget. But uh, if we want to be taken seriously as a legitimate organization, we got to cut out these shenanigans and get some black guys. Can we seriously start talking about the keynote speaker to the convention? <sighs> well, we don't really have a lot of time left, and we do. We still got to get to games and refreshments. I think we should talk about it a little bit. Okay, Vince wants to talk about the keynote, and Vince always gets what he wants, doesn't he? So let's get into that. Okay. What if I can get Duchamp? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, you can. 
can't. Anyway. What if I can get him? Listen, Vince, don't you think he was my first choice? The guy's my fucking hero. I mean, he's the brass shit. What I hold in my hand right here is the holy grail of frozen entree collecting. And it's known simply as the Duchamp Hungry Man. Back in the late 60s, early 70s, package designer working for Swanson by the name of Teddy Duchamp. Only here's the thing, he's not really a package designer at all. He's an artist. Okay, the guy fucking hangs out with Warhol. They're like friends. So he goes to unveil his new design for the 1972 Hungry Man line. And here's what it is. A white box with a picture of a fucking spark plug on it. No text, no fucking UPC code, nothing. No bullshit, just art, okay? But these guys, they don't fucking get it, right? Because they're not, you know, they're not into that shit. So they send him back to his drawing board and say, give us the usual bullshit that you crank out year after year. And he's like, fuck that. So here's what he comes back with. And this, how awesome is this? Okay, Salisbury steak, mashed potatoes, and roll of quarters right there, okay? And then he sends us a message over here, help, I hate my job. Cost him his job, made him a fucking legend in the industry, okay? So I know what you're thinking. Okay, if this thing's worth so much, and it is, then what the fuck are you doing just keeping it in your regular freezer? Well, here's the thing. You break into my house looking for the Duchamp, where are you gonna look? You're gonna look in the Calvinator 2000, you're gonna look in all these kick-ass freezers, but you're gonna be thinking, what kind of a fucking retard would keep it in his regular freezer? Next week's meeting, don't forget, not gonna be here, we're gonna have it over at the No Choice. Uh, anybody who can stick around afterwards, that'd be great, because my band is playing, um, yep, me and Al. It's a, kind of a big night for us, because we've got a uh, record label scout from Holy Trinity Records who's gonna be at the show. I know, we're really fired up. Uh, so anybody who can stay, just leave after the meeting and come back in and pay the cover charge because we get that money, all right? All right, good meeting, everybody. Nice. And uh, anybody who wants to challenge my high score on the dance game, uh, Dr. Howard has a sign-up sheet. crazy. My collection isn't shit. This is way better than mine. I mean, he has the Duchamp and it's MBT. Yeah, I just, I think it's, you know, the fact that he's a dental hygienist and you drive a Porsche. You know, your car is super cool. Do you want to go sit in there? Macaroni and cheese. Hey, you can't go wrong with macaroni and cheese, my friend. That goes with every dinner. What you got, Linda McCartney? She's dead, that's worth something. All right, here we go. Hey, Scotty, check out the Virgo now, huh? I can't wait, it's pointed down. Oh, let me explain, very simple. When you normally grab a doorknob, you don't even think about what you're doing, but what it's doing is actually causing a lot of undue stress and strain in your, in your ligaments, because your fingers aren't pointed at the right angle. Yeah. Now with the ergo knob, watch this, boom, fingers are in the perfect position, and it's not gonna put that stress and strain. No carpal tunnel, no bursitis, you're set. So, you still living up by Camelback? Mm. No, I'm, uh, I'm actually living with my folks now. Oh, oh that's, that's gonna be nice, I'm sure. Yeah. They yeah. enjoy seeing you. Yeah, and you gotta be saving some money. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long have you been there? Uh, my folks, I've, uh, a couple, couple years now. Ooh. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and think about it, doors everywhere. Right. You don't like strain and stress on your elbows, do you? No. I'll tell the guys at work. Oh, at the fire station? No, uh, I bartend two nights a week at uh, the manhole over on 3rd, and they've got a bunch of doors, nine, ten, maybe a dozen. Now, are they out at Saddlebag Gardens? Yes. Now, help me out. Is that a real town, or is that more of a private retirement town? It's a retirement community, yeah. Now, does that mean they allow cars? Uh, no, no, it's just the golf carts. Well, Al 
Charlie's the newest member of the Scottsdale Clown Cuts family. He's he's grown into his role as a stylist, and more importantly, as what you call them, a smilist. Yeah, well, Al and I have only clashed on one thing since he's been here. It's been makeup. That's important to us. We're a chain. We've got standards. So we just got the new Q4 insert for our corporate guidelines for face painting. Some really good stuff in here that helps us maintain the value of our brand as well as the consistency of our approach for the customer. Here are a couple you'll see here at our Clown Cuts in Scottsdale. Some of my favorites. This is actually the one that Al uses almost every day. Looks good on him. Not one of my favorites. Very low maintenance. Lot, not a lot of heart. But it looks good on him. Okay, everybody, here we go. Nose is on. Come on, you know. You play like you practice. Nose on, Al. Let's go. Couple of things, thank you. Thank you, Beth, for having yours on. Couple of things to talk about this morning from corporate. Real simple, we're not selling enough haircuts. We've got more clowns, we've got cuts. So we have upside here. So what's the answer? First one, we gotta get our cuts to clown ratio up. First thing to do is to ask every parent that brings a tyke in here, do you want a haircut? It's very simple. Let's get mom. Scissors, mom, head, she's already here. Let's cut her hair. Remember, there's no shame in getting your hair cut by a clown. And help them understand that the haircut's free, it's the clown you're paying for. Understand? Great. Secondly, for you right here today, we've got a new promotion. Anybody that can juggle for a customer, the first one wins a brand new Sony AM, FM, TV, weather, 40 preset Walkman. Anybody juggle? I can juggle. Beth can juggle. Let's see. One. Two, three, here we go. Hey, there we go, we have a winner, everybody. <laughs> Beth, enjoy this in good health. Watch out for the radio waves, gives you cancer. You two guys, I have two more of those in my office. Go home, practice with your balls, you can each have one. You know, tell you the truth, I just started getting into the frozen entree collecting, and you know, Sean, of course, has been doing it his whole life. It wasn't until Shelly now that I got into it. She's a super gal, she is just totally awesome. See, when we made the switch from punk band to Christian band, Shelly would come to all our shows. She would go up to Sean, and, and they would be talking, and, I, and they would be talking about the frozen entrees. And man, she just, out of the gate, boom. And which, you know, got me going. All that ex excitement got me going, and I got a collection of myself for myself. And, you know, and she's, she helped me out along the way. She told me what entrees I should be keeping, what entrees I should be selling. Man, she's just such a super gal. I started working here at the Clinton Center, I guess it was about a year and a half ago. Hey, Sarah. Good morning, Shelly. Hey, How's your weekend? Super good. How was yours? Great, thank you. Oh, okay, good. Hey, Shelly, nice sweater. Hey, Candy, thank you. I loved it in 82. Oh. Wait a minute. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Now I'm on the hotline, which is pretty nice, really challenging. <laughs> answer calls all day, eat my lunch, answer more calls. It's pretty busy. Hello, Sarah. Hi, this is Shelly. I'm one of the counselors here, the abstinence counselors. I'm, I'm sorry you had to wait. Thanks for waiting. Right, it says, uh, let's see, I've been told that you're a virgin. Oh. They call into our triage center first. The triage counselor will talk to them. They figure out what kind of level, what level it is of acuity. So, um, you know, if it's someone who's right, maybe they've taken some clothes off. Maybe they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. Maybe they're even naked. Maybe they're even. Anyway, those are obviously the highest priority. They go right away to you know whoever's available. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry? You're having a rusty trombone? Oh, you're giving a rusty trombone. Sorry. Could, uh, could you hold for just a minute, please? Thank you. Does anyone know what a rusty trombone is? It's a hand job and a rim job at the same time. It's on the sheet. Thanks. Are you still there? Are you still with me? Okay, good. Uh, is this in progress right now, or? Oh boy, oh boy. Okay, all right, uh, just uh, stay calm. Right, do you have some cold water? People ask me, you know, how do you do it? How do you maintain your celibacy? And one of the tips that I've found works for me is just collecting a lot of images of Jesus, 
and putting them in different places kind of strategically, places where your celibacy might be compromised. And it's a reminder all the time that uh, you better stay on track because Jesus can see you. And I mean, he can see you even in the dark. Aware of possible future litigations brought by the victim and any surviving family members, I resisted my human instincts to assist in his recovery. I spoke in a calm, steady voice as I advised him of the content of several waivers he would be required to sign before treatment could resume. Okay, God, Charles, that was good. I just need you to be a little more enthusiastic, be a little more vulnerable, perhaps. I guess it's a journey, and I take me on that journey. I want to go along. My bags are packed. I'm ready to go. I'm at the station. So just bring me along. Just be a little more childlike, a little more enthusiasm, perhaps. Just work with it. You guys amp it up a little bit. And action. This is when my years of training kicked in. In addition to my duties as a firefighter, I actually produce and direct training videos for the squad. Last year, I'm quite proud of the fact that I, in one of my productions, won a Golden Hose Award. It's very prestigious. It's an award for excellence in video production. What a blaze. Thanks, fellas. Job well done. Gosh, just a year ago, I was just a regular guy dragging a hose. But since the tragic events of 9-11, I've become a hero to a confused and frightened nation. Every man wants to be me. Every woman wants my seed. That's an awful lot of pressure. Hi, I'm Scott Baxter, firefighter with the Sunny Slope Municipality Fire Department. And today, we're going to learn how to be a hero. My guys here at Station 7 are, are truly amazing. They're fabulous. Um, they do find me a little mysterious, and I get some ribbings and raspberries occasionally. But it's all in love, and I take it that way. I don't take it personally. I think deep down they're a little curious to the fact that I am a frozen entree collector. It is a little out there, it's a little weird, I'll admit it, but um, that's just who I am, an artist. I have that kind of soul, it needs to be expressed. I'll tell you, it's great having him around the station. That, that guy makes a real good quiche. And you know one other thing, that guy gives a hell of a rub down. Apparently, when Scott got here, he was queer, I'm sorry, homo, but uh, I guess he's got that cleared up. Um, you know, being a firefighter, it's kind of like being part of a brotherhood. We've all got baggage. I don't care if you're an alcoholic, queer, Mexican. We've all got stuff we're trying to work out. I, I used to have a hell of a gambling problem. You know, with my uh, scheduling and work, I can pretty much take every Thursday afternoon off to come out here and practice my fundamentals and really work on my game. Folks have been playing the alphabet game along the highways and byways of this great nation of ours for years. and. Now we have a sanctioned league. You know, the league has kept the rules basically the same as I've known them since a boy. They made a few minor changes, just made it more conducive for league play. The player that wins a coin toss elects to drive or passage. Players look for a word that begins with the letter A on a billboard or sign. The first player to call out that word receives a point. Oh, uh, Karen, could you keep your young'uns away from the gasoline? We're gonna be rolling out in a minute here. Beaver Creek. Passenger. Phrase combination. Two banger. Bravo check. Combination de phrase. Two banger. Diesel. Exit. Farm. Driver. Triple combination. Delta. Echo. All non human roadkill is considered wild. The player simply points to the roadkill and declares the letter he or she wishes to choose. Roadkill, X. Driver's point, roadkill rule, X-ray. The roadkill rule was enacted to alleviate a recurring situation in which several games carried on for hundreds of miles and hours and hours and hours searching for an X or a Dairy Queen. Goes a driver. That is a game, gentlemen. That's a good game. It's a good game. Now I know I play the alphabet game and, and collect frozen food entrees and 
it's not the coolest thing to do, but I've never been one to stay on the beaten path. And as a safety and efficiency consultant, I think the most ironic thing is that I play such a danger sport. Uh, right now, the Entree Club has a few people wanting to challenge us. Sean in particular, he definitely needs to workshop those people skills. You see, it takes teamwork to make the dream work, and that's what we're all about here at X-Team. Based on research conducted at Yale on the immensely strong bond that exists between combat soldiers, we created the X-Team Viet Cong Prison Camp Experience. In order to create a bond like that on the corporate level, we put our participants through a living, breathing hell on earth designed to break down the individual spirit while building up the ultimate unbeatable corporate team. Okay, Jerry, I'm gonna put you back with the folks in the county now. And what I need from you is for you to be a team leader today and for you to create a win-win synergy for the team. You think you can do that for us? Yes, sir. Perfect, cut them down. Hey, I knew that it was gonna take a brave company, one with a pioneer spirit to be the first ones on board. And after months of doors slamming in our face, we finally get our first client. And who is it? Disney. Huge. They sent us over 200 of their Imagineers. The program proved very successful in weeding out their deadwood. Over half of the participants chose to quit their jobs rather than complete the nine-week program. You know what? A lot of pussies over there, Disney. But I'll tell you this much, the ones that did decide to suck it up and finish the program changed their lives forever. You know, before my prison camp experience, I was, uh, I was working downstairs in the mailroom, strictly part-time basis, and uh, look at me now, I'm upstairs, I'm in charge of goofy merchandising for most of the West Coast, uh, my numbers are high, management pleased, it's all good, and uh, to this day, I still find myself referring to my sales competition as Charlie. Nowadays, you go to a seminar, they get you all fired up, but I'll guarantee you this, a week to two weeks later, you've forgotten everything that you learned. Now, the participants of the VC experience never forget. They're still having flashbacks years later. The thing about being a hygienist is that you gotta have a hook. It's just like being a musician. You have to have some kind of hook, something to like bring the people in and make them ask for it by name. So my hook as a hygienist is that I just tell people, I don't give a shit if you floss, you know? And I got, I'm telling you, I got people like lining up out the door to book me. Are you gonna open? Well, cause it's a little bit after, it's just like a little after the time. I thought you opened it, then you... Hey, Veronica, hey. Uh, we'll be open in a couple minutes if you wanna go grab your booth. It's Shelly, but... Okay, thanks. The No Choice Cafe is an anti-abortion themed Christian cafe, and it's really an experiment for us. Um, we're trying to set up these locations next to or adjacent to uh, abortion clinics all across the United States. And if our third quarter projections are right, uh, we really hit a home run here. Um, we're looking at having five stores within the Metro Phoenix area within the next year, and then also opening up seven stores in Alabama, um, which should be really big for us to have that foothold in the South. You know, when I looked at this place, I thought, wow, this is perfect. You know, I'm across from this natural market. Um, I kept seeing these people, and I thought, what are they doing out there? They're protesting, they're yelling things, there's different slogans. I thought, these people have to be hungry. And as the rents kind of plummeted, I moved in and all of a sudden I was taking advantage, or I was actually, you know, catering to um, the protesters. Protesting is not easy. It can be a real bitch. I mean, it's hot out here in Phoenix. Um, you know, you're standing on your feet all day. Um, you've got to make signs. It can be a real drag on your day. That's what's great about the No Choice. You can come in, take a load off on the protest patio, um, and, and really keep vigil over the unborn. Baby killer! While enjoying a latte or a sandwich or a scone. The first time I saw Sean and Al's band, I was like their super huge biggest fan. I saw them at like this Christian rock festival. Sean told me that they used to be like really hardcore and they were called like the reach ups or reach reach outs, I don't know. But anyway, it's hard for me to picture them being like that because now they're, you know, they're really Christian. Hey, Shelly. 
Oh, hey, Doug. Been reading the word? Oh, of course. Praise him, praise <laughs> yeah. him. Just want to let you know I have a prayer circle, but then I'll be right back and I'll take your order for you, okay? Come on, people. Let's move, all right? A little hustle here. We're opening in five minutes. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Milo's actually the one who really brought him into that and kind of put them on a spiritual path to Jesus. He's just filled with the light of the Lord. Look, people, please, pipe down. We've got a lot of work to do today, all right? Let's get this thing over with. Our Father, who art in heaven, hear our humble prayer. Oh, Lord, Feel free to bequeath upon us an ample lunch crowd and fruitful walk-by traffic. Well, I've been a uh, promoter on the local and regional Christian rock scene for about the last about 10 years now. And uh, uh, Sean and his band are definitely my, my, uh, my main gig right now. I promote them, I manage them, and, uh, and I babysit them um, when they need it, which is often. Don't get me wrong, guys. I like it. I, I like that little backbeat to it. it it's cute. Um, but, I mean, the lyrical formula is quite simple, right? It's man has problem, man finds Jesus, Jesus fixes problem. Repeat. 12, don't look at me like that. And if you think that Bob from Trinity Records is gonna come down here and not expect your A game, you're sadly mistaken, all right? I mean, this is the Christian music business, but it's still the music business. And if you guys don't perform, he will fuck your ass. Fuck. Ah. Shit. God damn it. No, it's like, God damn it. I miss the old band. You know, that's when it was me and Sean all the way. I mean, that was our band. Fuck. Come here, little ball. Now it's all Sean and Milo and this whole Christian thing. And I don't agree with any of it. You know, it's like, fuck me. I don't know. But I don't really necessarily have a plan of my own, so I, I guess I'll go with what, you know, they're saying. God damn it. Fuck this. Shit. My outfit uh, puts on the uh, Christ of Palooza show every year over at the gardens. And uh, last year I received a call from Sean and you know, he was pulling no punches. He said that he and his band were more secular in nature but that they were looking to, to break into the Christian rock scene. Um, we talked a little bit about the buzz and the excitement and the merchandising surrounding the event. And uh, you know, Sean thought this was really the impetus that it would take for him to, to make that leap of faith and uh, to come on, onto the side of the Lord and his glory. Caitlin? Hey, sweetie, how you doing? Is that uh, operculum still uh, obscuring your number three molar? I don't know. Well, let's dig in and find out, huh? Hey, good. I knew that Milo... Oops. <clears throat> I knew that I couldn't... Uh, I couldn't send Milo a tape of the band, you know, just as it was if we wanted him to work with us, because... You know, the lyrics were pretty, you know, pretty dirty and everything. So we just set to rewriting the lyrics right there in the studio. Me and Al sat down, worked on the lyrics. I mean, we just stayed up late nights, and we not only did we rewrite the lyrics, we re-recorded all of the vocals so that we had kind of an A version and a B version of each one of our songs. Fuck! I love to fuck! I fucking love to fuck! I love to fuck fat girls! I love to fuck skinny girls! I love to fuck pretty girls! I love to fuck any girl who wants to get fucked! Hey, that was pretty good. Let's roll it back on the top, though. This time, let's do the new Christian lyric version. Stand by. Hey, I got to pray. Pray every single day. Wow, what a disc. They brought it in. I listened to it. It was that rough, raw, hard sound that I was looking for. I mean, I knew that it was going to sell. Milo was pretty happy with it when he got him. Of course, there was still the issue of the name. And man, we argued, we went round and round about that, and uh, you know, I think we probably went through about a hundred names before we finally arrived on one. And uh, you know, but from from there, it's uh, oh, it's all gone really, really well. 
and now we have this huge we've got a showcase coming up and uh sean your brother's on line too with the tty operator i'm with a patient can you just tell him i'll call him back would you well i guess it's an emergency all right just put him through yes hello i have a tty call from chris anderson go ahead Chris, I'm with a patient right now. What's the big emergency? Go ahead. What's TTY? T um, you see, my brother's deaf, and uh, so he can't make a regular phone call. So what he has to do is he has to... You're out of beer. Get some on your way home. Go ahead. Chris, that is not an emergency, and these calls are getting me in trouble with Dr. Shapiro, all right? So look, I will call you back when I get a break, okay? And don't use my shampoo. Go ahead. I told Al I'd get him a job in the mail room at Merrill. I know he'd make a lot more money there than he would at uh, Clown Cuts as a smilist. Hey Al, hey, how's it going? Is that a new suit? Is that silk? Hey, Al, aren't you going to spend some quality time with your big brother? No, I don't think so. You want one, Dad? No, I think I got one now. All right. I'll just have It's go time for Al. He's 32 years old. He needs to get himself a defined, proactive career path. He needs to move out of my folks' house, and he needs to get himself a girlfriend. He's in a band, for God's sake, and every musician I've ever known has been hip-deep in pussy all the time. But Chucky, it's a Christian band, isn't Mama, it? Mama, let me tell you something about these Christian girls. When you're banging them, they feel all guilty and dirty about it. It's awesome. Now, I know, I know, I know, he's got this thing for Shelly, but I've told him over and over and over, it... They don't want a friend, they want a man. Uh, she's, she's not my girlfriend, but um, this one's for Shelly. I mean, they can seem really boring if you don't have a really good singer. Well, really. listen, I mean, not to take away from Sean. Sean's a great... Do you think... Just honestly, do you think that 
We'd make a good couple. Oh. Like if you just... Shelly, do we, uh, we don't have to well. go over this every time, do we? I mean, we don't go Sean, you know the time. kind of girls that Sean likes, okay? Sean has a particular taste, and Al. Shelly, you're a sweet gal, okay? Sean is... Al, are you, what are you doing? You don't... Don't worry about it. I got it. Don't, don't worry about it. Clothes. Don't worry about it. Now, <laughs> Shelly, you got to listen to me. I've, uh, I've been friends with a lot of Sean's exes, you know, I've consoled a lot of broken hearts, okay? Ever since the eighth grade. So, listen, Shelly, you're just a sweet gal, you know, don't... Don't listen to me. He's not calling you, is he? Shelly? Be on a gurney. That was an hour of journey. <laughs> I'm kidding. That was just one song. It was a cockpit. So, are you stealing him? No. No. Um, see, I'll just give him the cash, and then he'll just hang on to it until midnight. They're just Nazis about their release dates, you know? It's like if the new dinners aren't are supposed to be out until Friday, you cannot buy them, you know, till like 12.01 a.m. on Friday. They're finally here. This is it. It's like Christmas morning, you know? Well, here we go. Holy shit, they're blue. The show's about to start here in about 15 minutes. Well, I talked to him yesterday. Well, he gave me every indication that he was going to be here today. No, we just haven't heard anything. Yeah, but could you at least, could you just page him for me? Yeah, okay, that would be great. Thanks. That motherfucker. I mean, do you think he's really going to blow us off? I, fuck, this, if, if he does, I'm taking it out on your ass today. Get a new house. Hey, I got to. 
Great gig. Good job. See, uh, Good job, man. That went awesome. Hey, listen, though. Crown of Thorns, uh, after the second verse, you're still not hitting that fill, okay? I didn't... Hey, just don't respond. Just just work on it, okay? Good job, man. Al, we pulled it off. I think we hey. did. I think... Okay. I'll tell you something else. I think we got a big, fat fucking Christian record deal in our future, too, because that guy was fucking loving our shit tonight. Did you see Vince? Like, yeah. making a big production out of, like, how he's got to leave early, how yeah. he can't stay and see the show, whatever. You know, I will say this for the guy, though. That website, that website that he cooked up for us, that thing rocked. What is with you? We had, it was our big deal. We had an awesome show. What? What's your problem? Dude, it's not the show. We had a great show, okay? Did, didn't you see her face? Who, whose face? Shelly's face. About the website. <laughs> The yeah. website thing? Yeah, the Seriously? website. Yeah. Oh my God. She'll get over it, Al. Relax. God damn. That it was. <laughs> hey, you didn't even look at his site, man. I, I mean, didn't it have was. To, it's man. not that even was... close. I mean, it was so much cooler than that. Just, it's... it's just out of line, man. Shame on those people. They didn't even give a chance for Shelly's website. I mean, man. It's like. <laughs> what? Uh, 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 what? You want to fuck her. Oh, man. Stop. 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 You do. No, I don't. <laughs> oh my God! You totally want this. Is 
this is just like Lauren Cavanaugh in the 11th grade. Oh yeah, my god. It's not like <laughs> You totally want to fuck her. That's hilarious. She's Al, she is nasty. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, you know, that's Dude, what you're we, into. That's cool. Me and Shelly yeah. are good friends, okay? Yeah, I care friends. a lot about her. I'm just I'm just she she got Al, her feelings hurt Al, tonight. Just say it. Just say it. Just say I want to fuck her. Oh, stop, I man. Wanna just fuck her. Stop. I want to give her my slippery chicken. I want to get him behind you, the rear admiral. Yeah. Listen. Woo! Yeah. Dude, say, say, listen. 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 Okay? Listen. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, just man. Stop, okay? Just stop. Just listen just to listen me for me. once. Okay, just okay? once. Just, all, all I'm trying, trying to say, all I'm I'm trying to say is, is you're a little inconsiderate. And you could have been, been a little nicer. nicer. <laughs> Dude, are we in 10th grade? In 10th grade? Fucking John, God damn it. Al, come on, seriously. <sighs> think you were a little hard on him? You think you were a little hard on him? Dude, dude, don't even start. Don't even start. Don't even start. Don't start. Don't even start. I'll turn this fucking hammer on. Dude, baby, 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 I'm in the bathroom. What the fuck are you doing? I'm pissing on my shampoo. What does it look like? What the fuck, Sean? It's for Chris. He's driving me fucking nuts. He's eating all my food. He's making a fucking mess. Runs the air conditioner all day long and leaves the door open. And now he's calling those 900 number sex lines. What? And he's fucking deaf. And he's using my shampoo and this shit is expensive. And the next time he does, he's in for a fucking surprise. What are you, in high school now? God, anyways. Look, we need to talk. So talk then. Oh my God. What? I just saw the gobbler. You know, I don't like that. Jesus. Anyway. Anyway, I got pulled over on my way home from work last night. Okay, and? And the officer that pulled me over was searching my car for drugs and alcohol and stuff, and we got to talking, and it turns out his name is Dwayne. His name is Dwayne? Well, yeah. And did Dwayne give you a ticket? <laughs> well, no, but we did start talking, and it turns out he went to Sunny Slope High and played football with my brother and stuff, and... You know, he's just really good looking and works out and has a great job and, you know, really has his life together. You know, he just seems like so much more of an adult than you. Well, I have a job. I work part time. I'm yeah, really... whatever. I'm just, you know, I'm just sick of all this craziness. I'm sick of the freezers and the stupid Christian rock. I'm just, I'm done with it. I don't want you to call me. I don't want to be friends. I'm just, ugh, I'm leaving. Well, did he give you a warning at least? What a wiener! We had to get rid of the frozen entrees. Um, I just couldn't justify the expense. $8,000 for a showcase, refrigerated showcase. I, I just couldn't justify it. I couldn't sell enough frozen entrees. Look, I just think this is a really bad idea. That's what I'm saying. Sean, what is your concern? My concern is that we're all equal members of this club, Vince, and we should all contribute an equal amount of cash to the convention. Okay, let's say we go by that. We, if we, go by, we have to go by the poorest member of the club, which in this club would be you. So, we have a fundraiser. What's the big fucking deal? I mean... Yeah, we could have a car wash. A car wash? Do you know how many fucking cars you gotta wash to come up with that kind of money? Vince, Vince, it's a good idea. Jesus. Okay, just relax. Okay. okay, everyone needs to settle down. This is a club for fun. Yeah. Okay, let's support each other. It's a good family. Look, here. all I'm saying is I have the money and I can afford it and I want to help the club. Look, Vince, we've been over this and over this and it's not going to fucking go down that way. So just end the fucking story, okay? What? End of Sean. What? End of story. Come on, man. He's... No, no. No, you don't speak for the whole group during the meeting. Let them, I want to hear what he have to say. We all Don't you see what he's trying to do? He's trying to buy the fucking club out from under us. Jesus Christ, Sean. I'm not trying to buy the fucking club. Oh, bullshit. All I'm saying not. is we have one chance to get this thing done right. I have the money to put up to make sure it gets done right. And if it doesn't, it could be the beginning of the end of Frozen Entree Stop. Collecting. 
Sean, I got a lot of money invested in my collection, and I want to take this thing to the there next it level. Is, right there. It's all about the fucking Fuck. money with this guy. Just watch. You let him put up the money for the fucking convention, and then it's going to be Vince's fucking frozen entree club, and we're gonna he's going to be giving us orders. We're all going to be jumping through his fucking hoops, and he's going to be running the fucking show. Well, you know what? Fuck you, man. You've been nothing but a fucking pain in my ass since you showed up with your poser pussy fucking collection. Well, I'm fucking out of here, man, and fuck you, and fuck you too, and fuck the rest of you fucking dicks. <laughs> and your door's a piece of fucking shit, man. <laughs> I've been saying all along, it's all about just getting the people together. See there, casino, uh, diesel. See, the, fro the frozen entrees are a common ground, they're a common interest, but they are meaningless. They, they mean nothing to us unless they unify, unless they bring us together. Um, ooh, enter, fireworks. <laughs> fireworks. Uh, see, once you give that frozen entree the power to divide, you're in big, big trouble, my friend. Huge. I'm actually worried about Sean. Um, he has some prior drug use, and, and I guess I just don't want him to relapse. He, I think he's hurting inside, right here, and I just don't want him to relapse. Are the members taking sides? Yeah, some of us have. Um, we're quite fractioned, actually, right now. I'm doing what I can. I'm making some calls. I'm trying to keep the group together. It, but it's just really not easy. Al, I don't even know why you tell me this shit. You know exactly what I'm going to say. I know. I know. But... Listen, if this girl means that much to you... She does. She means a you lot. You gotta go get her. You gotta tell her right now. You get... have a chance. I... I've seen this girl. She's in your league. She's nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm, I've got, I've got it under control, Chuck. I mean, I appreciate it, but you know. Listen, you don't have it under control. Here, this is easy to figure out. Sean got dumped. She's got a crush on Sean. Is she still going to be your little princess after he's banged the shit out of her? Chuck, don't say that. Shelly, Shelly's not that way, okay? She, she, she works at an abstinence center, and she's Shelly. really religious. She's just not that They're way. They're all that no, way. No, not Shelly. Dad, would you tell him, please? They're all whores, Al. Fucking A, Al. Put down the fucking ding-dong, get off your ass, and go tell this girl how you feel about her. For once in your life, be a man. Dad, can I borrow the car? Did what? It. It? What happened? It, the big it. It. You. 
-hmm. with Sean? And I know what you're, no, 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 don't look like that because it was great, it was really natural, it was fine. He was really upset, he needed a ride, so I gave him a ride home. And it was just, it happened so the other fast. Night. This oh, happened the other night. Yeah, yeah, and I was so nervous, but he was so sweet, he just kept talking to me. He wasn't just being friendly, it was more. And I didn't know, like, I knew his skin looked oh, good, but it's really soft. Shelly, all right, all right. Like, it's Shelly, smooth. what about the, the talk about, and, no, 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 you've been, you've been talking about marriage. I'm not gonna do this until I get married. I know, I know, well, I know we're not married yet. But I think, like, it's just, you know, the You work at the an Lord intercourse prevention hotline service, okay? How yeah. how contradictory is that? Well, okay? Yeah. I thought about that. The thing is, I thought about that this morning. And the thing is, I, I think the Lord, I know the Lord would forgive it because it's love. If it's love, it's okay. It's not love, It's really Shelley. when you just... It's not love. It's out... It's not, I mean... You guys aren't seeing each other. Don't think anything is going to come of this because nothing you, isn't going to come of this. How do you know? You don't I know. know Al. I know, Sean. I'm sorry, you Shelley. Know, you don't know him the way I do. I spent a whole night with him. Al, you don't know. Yes, I do know. Okay? You were laid. You got screwed the other night. Okay? It wasn't love. You're not going to get married. You don't know what you're talking about. My fucking brother was right. I can't believe this. I don't even want to know what that means. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Well, Shelly, Shelly, sit back down. No. Shelly. Listen up, everybody. This is my beautiful girl, Tony. Help me out here, guys. Baby, I love you with all my heart. Will you marry me? Yes. Yes. She said yes. story. For the past couple days, we've been telling you about this frozen food entree fiasco. Now, I saw two weeks ago in the About Town rag, I was looking to find out when Bang Tango would be coming to town because I haven't been bored in a while. <laughs> and I thought, Glory, wild man. <laughs> you can't stop me. And I saw that there was an ad for a frozen food convention. Then, the following week, I see that there's two ads. Now, there's two ads. There's a big ad, and then there's a little ad. So what I'm figuring out is these two guys, Sean and Vince, they've split up. They've gone their separate ways. One guy's having a big convention. The other guy's having a small convention. I don't think anyone's going. Who's going to go? Nobody's going to go. That's too many conventions of frozen food for one town. We're going to have those guys in here. We're going to solve that problem. We're going to go ahead and solve it with them, because I don't like it. That's too many conventions of frozen food. The thrilling frozen food war can hardly wait. We'll be right back after this. I don't know what's gotten into Al. I don't think he's really happy about what happened, even though I'm really happy, of course. But 
I don't know, maybe it's because we always talked about who was going to lose her virginity first, and I don't think he thought it was going to be me. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think it was going to be me, but I didn't know I was going to fall in love either, so you just never know. Anyway, I hope, I hope he comes around. Now that I have a boyfriend, it's, things are going to be a lot different. There's not going to be as much time for... Yes? Yes, hello. My name is Shelly. Oh, really? You are? Oh, are there candles? 106.9, Stan and Dan in the mornings. Well, everybody, they're finally here. That's right, the frozen food enthusiasts are both here. These guys have a feud going on. They got two conventions going on in town this, this big, weekend. Big, big, it's big. big news. And we're going to help figure this out for these guys because there can't be two conventions, fellas. I'm sorry. And before we go any further, That's I just want to know, why, Sean, why are you wearing the cock hat? And for first time guest only, buddy, so you look like a jackass. <laughs> what would it take to get you guys back together? I need to see a healing take place. What if I said that 106.9, <laughs> the rooster, was going to sponsor you and give you the convention hall this, this weekend? And then what if I also said that the good folks at Frigidaire were willing to bring down some refrigerators and freezers to help you with your frozen treats? The good folks at Frigidaire, they, you know what their slogan is? <laughs> Don't let the kids play in there. That's a good rule of thumb. Hey, Dan? <laughs> you know it. Big thumbs up from Dan. Also, the folks at Dickman Meat Pie, that's the meat pie to have when you have more than one, make mine at Dickman's. All of us get together and let you guys have one convention at the convention center. How's that sound? Would you do it? Yeah, that'd be great. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, I'll do that. Let there be a healing, everybody. Beautiful. 106.9 KOCK, the rooster. Okay, I've got the plans for the uh, convention. Good, good. This is what we've got here. Okay, the lobby right here, this is where the buses are gonna drop everyone off. We've got a pathway going through this section here that leads to the vegetable medley pavilion. Right along either side, we've got some really sweet display coolers coming in from Canada. Great place to display um, some of my stuff. Shelly. Shelly. Oh, Shelly, hey. Nice. Wow, Thank good. you. Nice. Hi, Sean. Oh, hey, how you doing? Anyway, um, as far as the elevator access, I think we're good there. Uh, we got plenty of room into the hotel. Hey, 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 how you doing there, sport? Good. Hey, you got my necklace. Oh, you yeah. found it. Awesome. I was totally looking for that. And you want it now, or? Yeah, well, I think I need it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, on the topic of terrorism which I think we have to address. Um, I mean, let's face it, there are some people back in the Holy Land that would like to see this convention not oh, yeah. happen, okay? I think, um, I think we'd be crazy if we didn't address that, and uh, I think we could talk to the local police department, the local fire department, maybe they could roll some extra squads, um, just send them our way periodically throughout the convention, um, and I think just everybody involved, uh, you know, be on a level orange all the time. Here's an issue we're going to have to deal with at some point. As near as I can tell, it's not actually wheelchair accessible. I don't know if that's a big deal. I don't know if we're going to have a lot of cripples at this thing. Yeah, it's fine. Fuck it. Hey, listen, Shelly. Um... Look, Al, okay. You were right. I really just, I, I don't want to hear about it. I just want to be left alone. Listen, this isn't about I told you so. Even though I did, it's not about that. The, listen, the, the other night I said some things that I regret, and I, that I said it in haste, okay? Um, you mean so much to me. What's up, guys? Hey, Chris. What, Mo? Yeah. Mo? Stand and dad cross the road. Get to the car. 
Today's the big day if you like freaks. Get on down to the Frozen Entree Enthusiast Convention. One o'clock, downtown convention center brought to you by your friends at KOC Cave, Frigidaire, and Dickman Meat Pie. Oh, okay. Uh, you need this? It's empty? I'm going to take this, okay? Listen, that goes with the projection system over at the Smoke Meats of the World Pavilion. Okay, so just... Uh, uh, take it over at base 17. There's a security guy over there. Get a purple pass from him, all right? You don't have a purple pass, you're not gonna get that shit anywhere. Okay, get lost. We got a lot to do today. Catch that box you want. Get that shit you brought. I got you the box. It's a sweet box. Dude, what the fuck's your problem? It's good. It's going awesome. The, the radio ads is people are coming. What? What? Dude, this is all a joke. Man. Oh man, you are just never fucking happy. Dude, the only reason why people are coming out to this freak show is to, to laugh at us. <laughs> okay, A, bullshit, all right? B, even if that were true, fuck do you care? As long as they show up, buy a fucking t-shirt, pay at the door. Dude, who cares why they coming? Really? Dude, I'm just so, I'm tired of being laughed at, okay? I'm tired of, I'm You're tired of being laughed at. You're, yeah. you're a clown now, I mean, come on. <laughs> really? Not anymore, dude. Al, no. why do you care so much about what people think of you all the time? You gotta get over that shit. Seriously, it's not uh, If I gave a shit about any of this, I wouldn't care what people think. I'd suck it up because I believed in it. Oh, so you but don't I, care? No, I don't care about this. You know? <laughs> well, is there anything you do fucking care about? Yeah, now? yeah, I cared about the band. Oh, you Remember cared? the band, the yeah. old band? Yeah, you not cared. the Chrysler's crap. Jesus, what the hell were you thinking about? Christian hey, punk? All right, first of all, that's that was a, a good light, idea. That's gay. And it's working. No, it right? wasn't, man. We didn't have to do that. We were we were on the right track. You just get so impatient. If it's not going good for you, you just up and run. You know Dude, we're not you. even that religious. Fuck you. What the you hell? Hey, you you might not have any spiritual oh. fucking compass, but I got faith up the ass if you'll Bullshit. check it. Bullshit. You Bull can check it. You are so full of shit. You'll say anything if it gets you what you want. Yeah, so you never get what you want. So who's better off? You never get what you want. Okay, you're... You may be right on that, dude, but you know what? I can't sell out. I can't wake oh, up in the can't morning. Sell out. No, I can't no. wake up in the morning and look at myself in the mirror. I can't wake up in the, in the morning mirror. and look at myself in the mirror. You know where I'm going. You know where this. I'm going. Oh, with shut this. up, shut dude. Up. Shut up. You're, Just you're, shut up. Shut up. Man, Man you know how old you, you know are? How old you are? God damn it. I'm so fucking fed up with this shit, Sean. Fuck you. Fuck your TV dinners. And, and you know what? Fuck Jesus. Hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fuck me? The convention was a, a great success. As a matter of fact, the Vegetable Medley Pavilion alone took in over 40K in ticket sales. Well, so then who got all the money? <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Uh, right before the convention, Sean comes up to me, man, I need money for rent and child support. So I bought a share out of the convention, 436 bucks. So how much did you make then? Um, I realized a net profit of over a quarter of a mil. <laughs> Are we going like ever? Keep your thong on. <sighs> well, you know, I don't really collect the entrees anymore. Uh, since our convention, um, my life has flipped upside down. My, my wife actually left me, said she'd had enough. Um, but it all, it all worked out for the best, really, because the most wonderful, intelligent, special, kind human being is now in my life. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I had, uh, had a little party to help celebrate uh, my mm -hmm. receiving of my one-year chip mm -hmm. from Ex-Gay Ministries. I remember. Um, straight for a year. <laughs> I was at that party, it's and... Uh, Scott and I were talking, uh, both both drinking. We we're feeling a little tipsy, and yes, we're. Yeah. I fell off the wagon. Um, <laughs> I guess you pushed me off the wagon, <laughs> and I guess you could say I'm guilty as charged because, oh, it was wonderful. Um, but who was I kidding? Not me. <laughs> I'm kind of ashamed of myself. You know, after all these years of being over overlooked and feeling basically invisible. To think that I was doing that to somebody else really makes me feel bad. And it's pretty incredible to find out that the person who's right in front of you this whole time is a perfect person for you. I guess that's the good news. We're just so happy. I hear Sean's doing good. I hear the band's doing good. I'm 
but you know that's neither here nor there. I um, I'm happy where I'm at. I just gotten myself into a band with uh, this great group of young folks. Um, yeah, the sound of this band is just it's just more you know it's more aggressive in your face. You know, it's like you know it's just a far cry from the Christian stuff that I was doing before. You know, and even some spots you know it's a little satanic, which is which is really neat. They said I could, uh, you know, sit in until they found somebody else, but uh, I, I think, uh, you know, I've been doing a killer job for them, and uh, I think they're really pleased with my performance. I am. Um, and just, you know, knock on wood, I hope, you know, I hope I get it. Um, I'm sure I will. just a great gal, you know, I think the world of her, you know, and we just are hitting off so well, you know, we have this great friendship, and I mean, she's kind of reserved, and she's a little, you know, quiet, soft-spoken, I guess, but, you know, we call each other all, well, I call her, but she's going out with our drummer, right, and, you know, Queef is a good guy, you know. But man, he just does not know how to treat a lady, and that really upsets me. And I want to let her know that, hey, you could be doing so much better, but you know, I don't know. You know how it is, man. It's like all the assholes, they, it's the biggest assholes who always get the really great girls, you know, so what are you gonna do? deal possibly even a movie things have been going so well i mean we are living the christian rock and roll lifestyle here man absolutely we're on our first world tour um we just did europe for like two months and now we're like uh, what 50, 54 in the 54 u.s 54 cities in the yeah. u.s and where then, are we now does anybody got, know where we are now <laughs> does it matter <laughs> i think we're in texas yeah. somewhere but i don't know <laughs> but uh but you know when this tour started we were uh we were opening up for holy ghost revival That's right and uh our song started just burning up the contemporary Christian charts, and uh, and now those motherfuckers are sucking our dicks, and we're the ones doing that. Right, right, you know? and, right. uh, and it's the rock and roll life. We're seeing the world. Yeah. We're uh, we're just making insane bank. We're just boning just all these hot Christian chicks, and we're just getting fucked up on the bus. And I got a tat, and uh, it's just it's the life. All my dreams have come true. God loves us. <laughs> God's gonna let us live forever. <laughs> Well, I feel so fortunate to have a number. It's like O2 in my lungs. It's such a nice round, lovely number. I love to roll it off my tongue Such a sensual Kabbalah I Nothing but problem with this fucking maggot from day one. We're gonna need Tourney out here. Stat! This is Ringo. Say hi, Ringo. Look at the camera. It's a big day. He doesn't judge, and actually, I appreciate that. He is a fighter, a good listener. He is a Sagittarius, what do you expect? When I'm in a situation where my chastity is threatened, and, well, I haven't actually been in a situation like that with a real person, but in my fantasy, or in my head, I've been over this over and over again, and, you know, chastity wins out, and purity, almost every time. 
We're not getting any younger, okay? We're all in our that, mid-30s. That doesn't matter. Al, it does matter to the labels, no. okay? We're gonna, you, as, as we get older, it's getting harder and harder to get a fucking record deal. Meanwhile, in the Christian rock world, Amy Grant's still considered really fuckable. Oh. 